Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Curriculum Mapping with G Suite. In today's video, I would like to walk you through the latest template for curriculum mapping. Uh, this template is optimized for use with Google's Data Studio. Um, so, as in previous templates, um, there is a step-by-step -step process outlined in a custom menu. And this video is assuming that you are already distributing unit planners via Autocrat into a unit planner folder. So in other words, you have a Google form that teachers fill out, and then it sends them a template document um, to get started on uh, filling in their, their unit planner because these are the pieces you will need to, to do this. So this is a template that I will be sharing in the community. So as not to disturb this one, I'm going to make a copy and walk you through the process in using the copy. So. I'll go ahead and close the original. So in a moment, we should see the custom menu load here. Here it is. So the first thing we need to do is um, essentially authorize the script to work on this Google Sheet, and we can do that by launching the Define the Unit Planner folder. And the way I'm going to run this video is I want to kind of show you what pieces of the code connect to what pieces of uh, these functions. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the Define the Unit Planner folder. So this asks for authorization. I'm going to go ahead and allow it to run. And I'm going to paste the ID of my unit planner folder. So I come here. This is my unit planner folder. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that ID. Paste it in here. The script will run and it'll say finished. OK. So that was successful. Well, what did we just do? We essentially stored the folder ID in the script properties. So if we go ahead and open up the, the script editor, and we'll continue to bounce back and forth from here. But if we go to File, and we go to Project Properties, we're going to notice that right here, this is my folder ID. Now we can reuse this information in the code for subsequent steps in this process. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that. I've also made an effort to comment in uh, a short narrative of what each function is doing. So if you're just interested in kind of figuring out what each piece is doing, um, there's a little description above each function to give you a sense of what's happening. Back to our template. So we've completed step one. Step two is simply to connect our Autocrat sheet. So this is the response sheet, the form response sheet that is distributing our Google Doc templates to our teachers. So when I click that, it's going to prompt me for the URL. Um, and I've pre-opened the spreadsheet here. So I'm going to just copy that URL. I'm going to paste it right there and click OK. Now, in most cases, this will throw an error, and you'll need to allow access uh, to the spreadsheet. Um, it's not giving me that error, but you may have to click in here in cell A1 and allow access to the data. And it'll populate the data from that response sheet. Once it's populated, you can actually just delete that tab. and remove it. So all we were doing there is establishing that 
trusted handshake between two different Google Sheets, allowing them to talk with one another. So moving forward, oh, if we go back to our code, so this is what it is. So we establish a trusted connection to the autocrat response sheet. All right, moving through the code. Now we're actually going to import that data. It's really the exact same process. I still have saved in my clipboard that URL. So I'm going to launch it and paste it again. But this time, the data will be ordered in a way that will be useful for me uh, in a later process. So I'm going to bring it in. and. The key thing to point out here is that the document ID is now located in column A. And we use this information to align this data with data that's going to appear in the files sheet. Okay? And if we go back to the code, we're right here. So import your autocrat response sheet data in the desired order. So we've done that. Check that box off. The next step is now to manually list the unit planners. So now, when I launch this, um, it's going to open a sidebar and populate the headers in column one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we can see these are all the headers. It actually froze row one and column one. Um, it hid the column ID. Uh, or the file ID column, just for uh, visual sake. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that again. We... Okay. So when I click Start, this will now list the all of the files that I have in this particular folder just the files, and it will also list the, the last time they were updated. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Start menu, and because there's so few of them, um, this should happen fairly quickly. Perfect. So this is done, and I can close uh, the sidebar. I know the process is done when fields such as subject area, grade level, cycle, start and end dates are populated, so on and so forth, because this function only runs after the listing of files has completed. So that's great, we're almost there. So now this is the manually listing of, of unit planners. This is kind of your go-to if, if something were to go wrong. Um, this just, it's a reliable way of relisting them manually. Step five is scheduling the relisting. Um, but notice when I run this again, how it actually, it's going to clear the data and relist. So you can kind of imagine this happening overnight without human intervention, pulling in new data new files, any changes to names, and so on and so forth. So that's that process. Now, to schedule the relisting of these files, um, that is this process here, auto relist files each night. Now I'm going to go back to the code. Um, so we've already done the manual listing of, of files, which is essentially this function. Uh, right here and notice it's doing it in batches of 10. So again you can read these notes to kind of get some more insight into what's happening. The scheduling of the relisting is done in this file, the batch process. And it's going to create a trigger that's going to launch this launch process. Um, and you can read about how that works as well. So I'm going to go ahead and run the auto relist files each night. Um, nothing magical happens here. It just will, again, clear the data. Um, but I'm going to show you the script properties and the triggers after this. In fact, let's, let's look right now. So if we go to um, the current project triggers, we have no triggers set up at all. And we still have, in our project properties, uh, we still have our folder ID. 
which is a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and run the auto relist of files each night. This will first clear the data and then repopulate it. And again, we'll know it's done when the subject area, grade levels, and this piece of data is finished processing. So there we go. So now we've actually scheduled this to happen each night. And let's go back to our script editor and we will go to the current project's triggers. So now look, there is a trigger that's time driven, it's a day timer, and so every day between 11 p.m. and midnight, uh, the script will automatically execute this relisting process. If the script can't complete uh, within the allotted time, so that's something I should have pointed out in this as well, that we have set a, a time limit at the top. So it'll do as many files as it can do within that time limit. It'll know when to stop, and then it'll create what's known as a continuation choke token. And then that the it'll also create a trigger to resume the process 10 minutes later. And that's all explained in the in the comments area of this code as well. So that's essentially it. So now I do not have to touch this anymore. Um, I can come back tomorrow and see any changes to this document. Um, but that should be enough to uh, get you started uh, on using this template with Data Studio. Thanks for watching. Bye.